Okay, this week we're in Psalms 84. <laughs> yeah. The joy of dwelling with God. It's got little notes with it, you know, for the choir director on the Giddeth, <laughs> which we've talked about that we've lost any absolute knowledge as to what a Giddeth was. We believed to be some sort of musical instrument, probably a string instrument, but nobody really knows today. A psalm of the sons of Korah. What do we know about Korah? Sounds a lot like crayons. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. A little bit like that, right? <clears throat> well, if we were to go back into numbers, right? Uh, <clears throat> 26 and 9 to 11. And they're doing the census, right? The sons of Eliab and Numel and Dathan and Abiram. And these are Dathan and Abraham and her so called the congregation who contended against Moses and against Aaron in the company of Korah. Right? When they contended against the Lord. You remember when they were in the wilderness and they're like, we don't need Moses or Aaron or, you know. We can talk to God ourselves. You remember that? What happened to them? They got swallowed. Verse 10, And the earth opened its mouth and swallowed them up along with Korah. Right? When that company died, when the fire devoured 250 men so that they became a warning. <laughs> it's one way to deal with an uprising <laughs> right so do we still not know anything about Korah well he, he died but in verse 11 the sons of Korah however did not die they didn't go along with it they weren't part of the rebellion so dad was <laughs> right and he got swallowed up by the earth but the sons didn't. We also know uh, in Second Chronicles and in First Chronicles, in First Chronicles nine, right, nineteen, and Shalem the son of Kor and the son of Elashib and the the son of Korah, right, and his relatives in his father's house, the Korites were over the work of the service, keepers of the thresholds of the tent. They're the gatekeepers now. So that family becomes the gatekeepers at the tabernacle. Right? So Kor himself got swallowed up by the earth, <laughs> along with 250 men who were rebelling against Moses and Aaron, and as it says in the Bible, against God. Because God had obviously chosen Moses. You don't get to choose how you deal with God. God chooses. <laughs> right? Can you come to God any other way today except through Jesus? No way. God set it up. The only way to get straight is through Jesus. You can try all you want any other way. doesn't work. You get to go to hell. <laughs> Right? It's that simple. So it's just interesting that the sons of Korah, <laughs> right, are still participating and they're even the gatekeepers. Right? Verse 1 How lovely are the dwelling places, O Lord of hosts, or Lord of armies, <laughs> right? How lovely are the dwelling places, or thy dwelling places. Okay. 
My soul longed and even yearned for the courts of the Lord. The word Lord is Yahweh, right? The covenant God, personal God, right? Yeah. My soul longed and yearned, even yearned for the courts of the Lord. This is somebody who wants to be in the presence of God, who wants to be worshiping God desperately, right? My soul longed and yearned, my heart and my flesh sing for joy to the living God. When you get up on Sunday morning and start getting ready for church, how excited are you to come to the house of the Lord? Sometimes we have, uh, I don't know, what, the birds, small one, and they play uh, up in that trees, and they give us tw uh, tw uh, tw uh, singing all day long and everything, and we we really we were, we really <laughs> uh, have, have a good that for. It's good. And then, so here. It is. But how often do you get up and, and you, you get into a fight with your wife or something, you know, or something doesn't go right and then you get in a bad mood, and right? You know, do we come to church actually excited to be here to worship the Lord God Almighty? Yeah. This, this is an example of somebody whose who's single greatest desire is to be in the presence of God. And to worship him. History, history, background of this is he denied access to that because they've been captured and sent off or something. Or nope. He's the gatekeeper. He's there. You know. Okay, but I don't know. You know I just got the impression from reading it that his right. Well, in this case, it says for, for the choir director, right? You know, okay. they're participating in the worship. Okay? Yeah. You know, and now, Matthew Henry thinks that David wrote this psalm. Actually, because it's so much like Psalm 63 that David wrote. But we don't actually know. You know? Who, who the actual author is, but if it's Davidic, it was written way back when the tabernacle, right? Before the temple. The, the time of the tabernacle, because, you know, Solomon built the temple. Yeah. David rounded up all the supplies. Everything needed to build the temple was there. Solomon just had to put it together. <laughs> Right. Okay, so, but even though he is participating, his, his daily excitement about being in the presence of God and worshiping the Lord God Almighty, right, it's just amazing. He says, the bird or a sparrow also has found a house and the swallow a nest for herself where she may lay her young. What do you know about swallows? They just fly. They don't ever light unless they're making their nest to lay their young. <laughs> but in the temple area, whatever, you know, up high, yeah. they're able to do that. So they're able to be there all the time, <laughs> right? Yeah. He's kind of jealous that they're there all the time, right? Even thine altars, O Lord of hosts, my king and my God, right? Now, you look at this, uh, when he says, even thine altars, and he's talking about these birds making a nest, so the question, we kind of come back to ourselves, is where's our nest? Where do we make our nest? Where's our focus? Is our focus on God like this? Or is it on our daily issues? As if God couldn't handle those.
even thine altars, O Lord of hosts. Lord of hosts. Okay? Now, when you look at this discussion about the place, you think a lot about the place, the temple or the tabernacle, right? But it's not the temple. It's the God of the temple, right? The tabernacle, the God of the tabernacle. What was unique about the tabernacle and the temple at the same thing? It had the Holy of Holies, right? And what's in the Holy of Holies? What's in the Holy of Holies? Well, it's three ways. I forgot it. <laughs> well, the main thing is the ark, right? Yeah, the ark of the covenant. What's on top of the ark? Uh, cherubims and uh -huh. seraphims. And the cherubim facing each other, right? And right in between the two of those, right above the ark, right there, what is that spot called? Holy, holy, well, the whole the, the room, the little room is the Holy of Holies. That's the, you said it, right? Mercy the mercy seat. seat. Yeah. Right? And right there was the presence of God to Israel. Right at that spot. Okay? So to be, and of course, remember, only the high priest could go in there, and he could only go in once a year. <laughs> right? To make atonement for the sins of the nation for the year, right? yeah. You know they tied bells on the bottom of his gown. Tied a rope on him. So that he, he had to continually be doing something to make the bells ring. Otherwise, they were going to have to pull him out of there. Yeah, exactly, because they couldn't go in. <laughs> well, and they thought he was dead. If and something happened, they'd have to pull him out by the rope, <laughs> right? They couldn't go in there. So that's how holy that place was. Which is why it's kind of shocking that later, before the exile, it tells us that God left the temple and nobody noticed. They were still going through the, going through the uh, ceremonies, right? They were still making the sacrifices. They were going through the motions of being religious. But their heart was not with God. And when we look at how this guy is pointing out how much he wanted to be in the presence of God, right? And then we say to ourselves, do we feel that way? Sometimes I think I just go through the motions. You know, my heart isn't always that close to God. Thank goodness God hangs on to us, right? When we're drifting away or sometimes running away, right? God's still got his hands on us. <laughs> we can't get away. I think as, as, uh, as pastor, uh, and when we tra uh, travel and we always Sunday and It's um, when we came to the first time uh, in um, the first entry in uh, here, and uh, we said, "Oh, we right, we got out, out and got out and found down the road and uh, go in." And and in those days, they always. Uh, have the people knew you come in. We did, and the uh, uh, <clears throat> went through the uh, services, and then the pastor's pastor um, went to my wife and says, "Do we have our, our two kids?" And she said, um, "We have sent, uh, um, our meat on the table at home. Come on over." And we we went there, and then and then as we started uh, a little about uh, well the the, the par pastor of that church was uh, we uh, we the other pastor that. Uh, uh, with uh, uh, a 
Alaska when I was up there. And well, everything is, and we just joy with that. It's the, 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 the build, building that says, says, but what is there? The, 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 yeah, the fellowship of the other Christians, you know, because we're all interconnected by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And when we get together and fellowship together and worship God together, it's amazing, right? You know, and he just, this guy is so focused on this, right? So how blessed are those who dwell in thy house? And who was that? Who dwelled in the house? Actually lived there. In God's house. The Levites. Yeah. Right? You know, that was their job. <laughs> okay? They are ever praising thee. Right? How many times was everybody, every male required to go to Jerusalem and go to the temple? How many times a year? Can't answer that question. I don't know. Three. There were three great feasts, right? That they were required to go to Jerusalem, if that if at all possible, right? You know. And so God was making a point that this is a place for you to come. <laughs> right? And he made it so that they had to. How blessed is the man whose strength is in thee. What's another word to say, blessed? Well, uh, the passing through the valley of back, back up, I mean, that, that would be something that they were... Yeah, we're going to get to that one, right? But blessed means happy, oh, happy. but divinely inspired happy. Yeah. It's a, there's a, there's a, a, a God-type connection to being that happy. Right? You know, so happy. It's just like the Beatitudes. Okay? Yeah. So you put your trust in God, and what do you get? Strength. In whose heart are the highways to Zion. <laughs> what is Zion? The beautiful city of God. Jerusalem. Right? Sometimes the temple. Yeah. But frequently it's uh, Well, this said it's originally the name of the hill on which Jerusalem stood. Yep. It started out as the place and it became the, the city and sometimes the temple. Right? <clears throat> you know? Because God chose Jerusalem, didn't he? There's a song about that, isn't it? Mm -hmm. We're marching to Zion. Uh -huh. But then he says, <coughs> passing through the valley of Baca, they make it a spring. <coughs> the early rain also covers it with blessings. They go from strength to strength. Baca means weeping. Right? A couple weeks ago, we went through the 23rd Psalm. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, right? I'll fear no evil. We had the same conversation last week, okay? And now physically, because this is both a physical and a spiritual issue. Physically, coming to Jerusalem. They had to come to Jerusalem, remember those three times. But when you come to Jerusalem, you had to pass through valleys where the spring rains would make it hard to cross. Right? But they had made ways to go through all of those places. Now, when you came to um, the uh, Festival of Booths, right, there wouldn't be any rain. <laughs> Everything's all dried up by then. But if you're coming to Passover... You know, probably in April, right? <laughs> There's probably water flowing. You know, so they had to deal with that. The early rain, right? It says covers it with blessings. So even the water that made the passage more difficult 
you know, God says those are blessings. They go from strength to strength. And every one of them appears before God in Zion. So if you set your heart on going to Jerusalem, right? If you set your heart on being a part of the worship of God, God will see you through it. From strength to strength, you're going to get stronger and stronger. The ways to get in there, God prepares for you. He makes you better as anything that would hinder you from reaching him and participating in that worship. Because that's what God wants, fellowship with us, right? Why else would he send Jesus to die on the cross for us if he didn't want us? You got any other reason for that? <laughs> he said, O Lord of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob. Why do you suppose he said the God of Jacob? The old shield, O God. <laughs> <laughs> right? Does Jacob have another name? Israel. Israel. God changed his name to Israel, right? Now, Jacob, remember, was gone for 20 years. Went and lived with Laban. Got himself a couple of wives, a bunch of kids, <laughs> a whole bunch of animals, <laughs> right? And then, and then was able to return to see his father again. Right? But <clears throat> Jacob, you know, God made a covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And then changed Jacob's name to Israel. Right? Our covenant God. Oh, Lord God. Lord God. <laughs> right? Yahweh, Jehovah. <laughs> right? The God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob. Behold our shield, O God. Who's your shield? If your trust is in God, who's your shield? God. God himself. Can you come up with a better one? <laughs> Why are we so dumb that we try to do everything ourselves instead of trusting God? <laughs> We want to be independent. <laughs> it's that pride. Oh, I can deal with this. I can handle but this. But he made us that way. He made us to, to be independent and not uh, suck at everything. We're supposed to do it ourselves. You're supposed to participate in doing it while depending on God, not on your abilities. Your innate abilities will fail oh, you. I haven't got any abilities. <laughs> <laughs> you got to depend on somebody. Yeah. The older we get, the less abilities we have. <laughs> Tell me about it. Yeah, right? I can't do squat anymore. He says, Behold the shield, O God, and look upon the face of thine anointed. Now, who was anointed? This is another one where I think uh, Matthew Henry points to David because, you know, Saul was anointed king, then David was anointed king, right? So if this is a Davidic psalm, you know, thine anointed, he, David was anointed, right, to be king, the king. But even after that, if there wasn't a physical anointing, there's a spiritual anointing, you know, in all leadership, who puts the people in charge of countries? God. Right? Thine anointed. For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand outside. He's saying, I'd rather spend one day with God than a thousand days anywhere else. A thousand rounds of golf at Pebble Beach. <laughs> Right? You have blisters on your tongue. <laughs> One day with God is better. Who would who would pick otherwise? 
Well, there's about uh, six billion people right now that are picking otherwise. They don't pick God at all. Right? And then you got to talk about those of us who are true Christians, right? Do we really feel that one day with God is better than a thousand days anywhere else? Better than a thousand days with your family. Well, we have to assume that because we don't haven't experienced that. Well, if we haven't experienced it, then it'd be our fault because God is there waiting for us. Mm -hmm. And even as we move into our worship service, do we actually get our hearts right for worship? Or are we thinking about all the little things that go on in the service, you know, and if we're participating, well, I've got to be ready to do this, and I've got to be ready to do that, whatever, you know. Do we get our hearts right? Look what this guy's heart, look where his heart is. His heart is for God, period. Nothing else actually matters. Right? I would rather stand at the threshold of thy house. Remember, they become the gatekeepers. <laughs> of thy house, O God, which is outside, by the way, in the rain or whatever. Then dwell in the tents of the wicked. <laughs> Better to stand outside the door of the, of the tabernacle in the rain than to be inside the tent of the wicked. Even, right? Even in snow. Huh? <laughs> they didn't get a lot of snow, but yeah. <laughs> For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. Those poor guys at the Buckingham Palace where they, the, the, the English had those guards standing outside that can't smile or move, or, <laughs> right? And they stand there no matter what. Or the Marines at Arlington, right? No matter what, they're standing there. At least this guy can smile, <laughs> right? I'm standing at the door. I'm happy as all get out. The Lord gives grace and glory. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk uprightly. <laughs> right? Everything he needed, he got because of his fellowship with God. This guy just really loved to worship God, to be, you know, in the presence of God. Verse 12, O Lord of hosts, of host, how blessed is the man who trusts in thee. And again, blessed means divinely happy, <laughs> right? You trust in God, you're divinely happy, right? Does that mean you're not in the rain? No. Things happen to everybody, right? There's always going to be issues in life. But if your focus is on God, who is also the solution to all your problems, now, he may have you, Jerry, you know, we may, in order to solve the problem, we may have to drive to the bank and do this or whatever, you know, we can do what we're supposed to do, just whatever the problem is, right? We may have to go to the doctor, we may have to have surgery, we may have to do, you know, whatever our issues are, right? But God is the provider of the solution. <laughs> However, he wants to help us take care of it. And if we know that, and the worst thing that could happen is actually a blessing. Suppose we die. But a guy with a heart like this, where do you go? That's blessing. Straight to God. <laughs> you know, these crazy Arabs who think they need to kill all the Christians, not Arabs, but Muslims, right? All they're doing is sending them to God. Because if we have that heart for God, how blessed is the man who trusts in thee. That's where we have to put our trust. This guy, going through this lesson, just, 
His heart for God just amazes me. And convicts me, you know. I'm not like that. I need that kind of heart for God. <laughs> There's a, another little lesson in this well, thanks, that indicates that because your father or your grandfather was evil, that you don't have to be. And you can still have access to God like he is instead of the guy that he's named after yeah the son of Korah and here he is yeah. with this kind of heart and maybe he felt that way before which is why the sons did not participate in the rebellion yeah. right mm -hmm. you know assuming it was written at that time rather than being Davidic which would be quite a bit later right But he, he, the lesson is the same. The sons did not participate. And many, many years later, even after the exile, we have in Second Chronicles that the sons of Korah were the gatekeepers. All right? Okay, well that's Psalms 84.